Hello everyone, my name is Dave Partner and welcome to your second tutorial on how to build an API and a microservice for beginners. In this tutorial, I'm going to make a bold attempt at explaining the whole architecture for you. No explanation is perfect, you can always go online to read more to get more information and um, if you have anything to add to this explanation so that others will read and understand or anything to point out, please add them in the comments below this video i read every comment all right so the first thing um here are some terminologies you have to know I, the further more terminologies will come on along the way i'll mention them as we go on in the video the first terminology you have to know is a web service a web service is a way to expose the functionality or data of an application uh, to other applications using http um, this is the key word in this definition so um, HTTP is a keyword and then uh, HTTP has some something called HTTP verbs they call HTTP verbs and uh, these are HTTP verbs get post um, delete put patch there's patch there are many of there are a handful of them half a dozen of them also there is patch and uh, and so on and so forth we'll see them as we code there are like six to eight of them HTTP verbs or even much more sometimes you, there are much more all right so um but then this is a, 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 it's um this instruction is passed in through um, um a web service just know it now and you will understand better as we go on a microservice um sorry for the spelling a microservice is a service oriented architecture that is soa of developing software applications so that the application is made up of multiple loosely coupled and independent modules and that will um, don't worry if these definitions con confuse you i'm just putting it so that if you need it anyway you can always hijack them but i'll quickly explain this so that you understand but let's quickly um, grab the definition of an api api is the language used by different modules and applications to communicate with each other all right so this this microservice is a software um, development approach um, the opposite of microservice is called monolithic and monolithic software is basically what um, most people use by default uh, one single software with tightly coupled uh, modules for instance if you are told to build an application you quickly um, um, have your database inside your one server or whatever let me reduce So um, you have your database, then uh, quickly let me add it, add your DB, add your DB. Then of course you have your, your application. So um, this is your Laravel app or your, or your Cake PHP app or whatever app you're building or even raw PHP or Ruby on Rails, whatever or uh, your mobile app I own it this is it so here you have all your files you dump everything here and then all these things start making calls to the database and that this is a tight, tightly coupled uh, architecture a way it's a monolithic way of building uh, a software there's a problem with this what if um, in this case you have your for instance search function in the file that is here you have your um, list of users here you have your recommendation a feature here you have all your features are inside files that are inside this place and the problem with this what if users are making so much search more than every other feature sometimes uh, your users are using more feature way 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 more than every other feature or sometimes your company runs a, an ad advertisement and they get fifty thousand subscribers in a day so uh, and those 50,000 subscribers are hitting only one or two sections of the app for instance the user registration section and probably the user login section what do you do you can't really um, scaling this thing becomes a problem because you have to copy the entire app and put them in another server and then into another server into another server as users hit as users hit your application and then um, if you look at it it's not smart because they are hitting only two sections or two features in the entire application and you can have up to 30 features 
just because of the ad campaign you're running you're getting so many signups and logins and then that's it so what if you could just um, isolate this sign up and uh, login such that you have um, you put it on a separate server would have been nice wouldn't it so um, I'll show you how it's it, that is where microservices come in in microservices these things are are loosely coupled it doesn't matter it mustn't be one database so in, in a microservice architecture you have um, oh, let me get this let me get this in a microservice architecture you have one module called your user module um, we could call it um, user list module you can just say user list so what this module is does is get the list of users simple and that's all it does so you have another module that does um, uh, user sign up so what this module does is user sign up user sign up and that's all it does that's all so that we'll have one more module and um, just to make you get the picture one more module and uh, what it does is we could just say that the third module just does uh, user login and that is all it does so we have uh, a user login and uh, that's all so if you want to build an app this is not even our main application this is just uh, we just uh, built a different modules and would not build the main application so let's say that these different modules make up um, our microservice so we now want to build an, a mobile app this microservice is independent sitting on the cloud there let's say I'm just gonna put a circle on it but uh, that's not really ideal for this explanation let's just say that these guys are sitting on your cloud somewhere and um, you want to build a mobile app what do you do you just uh, quickly start building your mobile app let's call this your mobile app and your mobile app needs to make use of two features which is user login and user sign up what does it do it collects the user email inside the app collects the user password then it passes it to this particular um, module this module processes it and returns data back so what this guy uh, basically does is pass data to this module this module returns data back and then the, the, the data could be yes we've registered a user uh, the user has been successfully signed up okay um, let's just do you sign up so it passes the email and password here and probably user city user user um, gender height and stuff passes this data up to the user sign up module user sign up module processes it and returns data back and the data is usually like okay 200 okay or like yeah the, the, the query was successful and the user has been signed up successfully then it can return the details of the user so what this mobile app basically communicates with this um, using something called an api the api is the language that is being used for this communication it's called an api all right it's a two and four um, a method then the instruction being passed on is the the get post and put but then you may be asking how would this guy um, make a call to this particular module instead of this or that it's called an endpoint so let's say that these whole modules are hosted on on dave partner.com slash so user sign up is slash user sign up and uh, this other one the user list does the same thing the partner.com slash user list and the final one is the partner.com slash user login all right so um, we have three modules and these guys are called endpoints we have endpoints 
So uh, we've coded in our application that if somebody visits this URL, they are trying to get the list of, if, if somebody visits user list, they're trying to get the list of users. So we can say inside this uh, module, we can say that somebody can only get the list of um, users here if they are using a get request. All right. Then here, user sign up, we can say we can only accept post requests or put depending on what you want, user login, we can only accept post requests. So depending on what you want, we'll, do, we'll go in depth into all this. So if this guy, this mobile app, let me just call it a mobile, mobile app, it doesn't matter what uh, this architecture was built, it's completely independent of what your mobile app is being built with or what your website, you can build a website that will make a connection to this. So let me quickly drop uh, website so you can build a website that will make a connection to this so let's say this is your website.com all right so um, and so many other people can build their own architect their, their own uh, software applications that will make use of these uh, modules all right so um, it doesn't matter what language you could use Laravel to build this and somebody is using Ionic to build a mobile app and somebody else is using cake PHP to build this website you understand it doesn't really matter what um, it, the, the, the software technologies are independent of each other the only thing is that the language is what is common and the language is called JSON or XML JSON is easier to use so uh, a whole lot of websites prefer to use JSON than XML so I'll show you an example of JSON right now so what they basically communicate with each other is data and um, this one, this website will be like, hey, you guy, uh, give me the list of users, give me 10. So they will visit uh, usersignup.com slash 10. And um, bang, this guy does the process, retrieves the list of 10 users and passes it to this other guy. And then this, this other guy receives the list of 10 users, then displays it on the site, and that's uh, the list of your 10 friends. Somebody else does sign up, somebody else does login. I should have put this thing here. So somebody else requests for login. So um, the different applications you're building are calling this. So if you are building an application in which you're going to end up building a mobile app for it and end up building different websites for it, you better think of it in a microservice architecture way. You understand? So build the microservice first, all the modules, you build out all the, write out all the functions for all your endpoints and then you start calling them from your mobile app so each of the website needing using making calls to this um, service may never have to use a, a database again so only one app using one database and different apps are connecting to it it's just an amazing um, amazing architecture and it's easy it's so easy to use because you can assign one programmer and say hey build the user sign up for me and uh, the programmer writes the user sign up module and um, you can test that user sign up module independently. So this all these guys must not be on the same app. You can just take this user list and build it. Let's assume that this app was built with Laravel. You can take this user list and build it with Kick PHP. When the user sign up, after user sign up, if the user sign up needs to make a call, remember that, that these modules can make a call between each other. You understand? So this guy can use a, um, a web service to make a call to this guy and um, gets data back and before passing it to the mobile app each of them can make calls to each other and externally too all right so let me show you an example of um, of json and a website that you can use to generate list of uh, a whole lot of things including list of users list of is the star wars website let me show you all right here it is it's called swapy.co you can visit it and uh what it does is it has a list of all Star Wars characters and their weapons and their galaxies and everything. See people, films, movies, species, and a whole lot of uh, everything from the seven Star Wars films. So if you're building an application, you need to get dummy data for your application. You can always use this. So this is a, a sample endpoint, swapy.co slash API slash people one. This, if you visit this endpoint, and of course, I guess it's a GET request. So if you click here, it makes a GET request. I'm just guessing it's a GET request. So um, this is what you get. This thing is called JSON. 
JSON is basically data. How you know JSON is that everything is different from JavaScript objects in the sense that everything is inside quotes. Both the right and the left hand side are inside quotes. As you can see, you can see this inside quotes. So everything here is a string. All right. So um, we requested for one person and we have name, Luke Skywalker, height, whatever, mass, and stuff like that. So your application can actually make a call to this and get this data and then use it to display um, this user details anyhow they want it. So let's make a call for 10. Let's make a call for 10 characters or let's say 6 characters. I've typed people 6. They are the ones that determine that this is how this endpoint will work. Click OK. I request and um, it refreshes and shows me a list of 6 characters. So well, if that is not working here, let me quickly show you. So we copy this swappy, swappy.co API, then people slash six. So we'll open a new browser tab, type it in there, swappy, and uh, the people six, then we hit enter. And uh, guess what we are about to get. So it gives us this. So we requested for this, and that's what we got. Oh, well, I don't know why it's moving this way. So, but that, this is how it works. I'll show you other tools for doing this, but this is basically how your, it works. Your application visits this URL and uh, it gives you a JSON return, JSON data like this that you can use in the rest of your application. All right. Um, this is just one website. There are many websites for this. I could mention some later on. This is just one dummy website that um, generates dummy data for your app. There are websites you could just make a call to and you get 10,000 users and um, use it to populate your app temporarily so you can gradually remove it as people um, come. All right. Thank you very much for watching this video tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, in my channel. In the next tutorial, I'll take you through how to um, build a microservice with Laravel Lumen. Remember that you can use any other platform to build it, but Lumen is the best that best so far. All right. Uh, one more thing I forgot to teach you is that, for instance, um, the microservice is the kitchen itself that produces the food. So this is the kitchen that produces the food, and um, you are the device or the device. You understand that the device or mobile app or the website. If you are the one, and then the instruction is web service where you say put get post, that's what the instruction uh, you send, then you send data with it. Then the waiter that serves the food is the API. The API is basically the connectivity between all these guys. All right, thank you very much. See you in the next tutorial.